Some of us learn lessons by being told and some of us learn lessons by experiencing. And I'm the latter, more so, more often than not. And I wish it wasn't that way. Life would be easier if I could just learn by hearing instead of by, by doing, you know. And so here I was, probably 19 years old, you know, the world is my oyster, I can do whatever I want to do. And something inside me was saying, there's more. You know, there's more, there's more, there's something deeper, there's something more lasting. And even there's something more exciting. I remember actually being at a party one night um, and thinking, I want to go home so that I can get up tomorrow and go to church. I remember feeling like, why am I thinking that way right now? I've got this girl inside, I'm pretty sure she wants to hook up. There's like a cooler full of super ice cold, just delicious beers waiting for me over here. And I'm like, but actually, I, I actually want to go to church tomorrow. And it wasn't about like going to church and being religious. It was like there was something else I wanted, you know. This idea of being connected to the divine, being connected to the creator of the universe. Um, I had tasted that before, but I felt even beyond what I had experienced, there was something bigger, there was something more. And I remember during that period of time, I had started reading my Bible again and seeing all these miraculous things that happened and being like, I want to be that close to God because, dude, like, to know that the God of the universe is that close to me, that would be super cool. I want that. Yeah, the film The Heart of Man that I, I act in, there's this scene where the prodigal is about to walk off this cliff. The guy's like totally blinded. We've all been there. We just have no idea what we're about to walk into. We see something that looks to us that's to be so good, and we're a bit blinded by uh, our ambition. Um, there's just something that's off, and we're just too blind to see it because we're too driven to where this thing we think is going to bring us life. And here you have God portrayed by a loving father. And he's sitting there. He's not angry. He's passionately trying to woo him back with the violin and the music that represents friendship. So the father is never, he's not, you know, tackling the son or hitting him or calling him stupid. He's like, what are you doing, man? Don't you see where this is going to lead you? He's sitting there saying, dude, how about instead of going over there, I know it's not going to lead you where you want to be. I love you. Let's play catch instead. You know, he's always offering us this better yes. Even when we're blind and, you know, I'm one of those guys and we all do this at certain times. We all have to learn the hard way. We walk off the cliff and it's not till later on we realize that actually wasn't what I wanted. And the father's sitting there saying, come sit with me. I can show you what it is you actually want. And that's been my life story for the last 17 years of him. Me saying, all right, let me hear what you have to say. And him leading me very specifically down this path of all these things that are so much better than what would have had for myself if I had just kept doing my own thing, you know. Jesus is not even the slightest amount intimidated by our questions or our uh, brutal uh, inward or outward ugliness or our like very intentional wrongdoings. Yeah, he's bigger than all that stuff. I now realize um, just how much he loves who I am and doesn't love me based on what I do. And that changes everything.